Well, the hits keep coming. We've got another crazy week of AI video updates. Kling just dropped a version 2.5 turbo model. Uh, does it return them to Kling of the Hill status? Yeah, you got that one. We'll find out. We've also got a really crazy character swapper. You can kind of think like Nano Banana, except for video from WAN, which is great because that means it's open source. But even if you don't run locally, I've got a spot where you can try it out for free. All that plus Sora 2. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. Uh, and maybe sooner than you think. Kicking off, Kling 2.5 has arrived. And I gotta say, I'm, I'm actually really impressed with Kling's commitment to version numbering. Most other companies renumber with even the most minor updates. Yeah, Apple, I'm looking at you. Kling, meanwhile, has stayed like doggedly parked on the 2.x version. Now, just off the bat, Kling 2.5 is a turbo model, uh, meaning that generations are not only quicker, but cheaper. But that's not to say that there aren't a number of other improvements. Uh, Kling 2.5 boasts better prompt adherence and temporal control, scenes that are more fluid and stable, consistency with a variety of styles, and it is coming in at 30% uh, less than the 2.1 model, all of which does sound pretty great, but uh, how's it looking? Well, let's go find out. Kicking off with a quick comparison, uh, this is a shot that we ran in 2.1, a uh, very like Sicario influenced. The prompt here is very simple, just man walks forward. Um, overall, pretty solid output, no stutter step. Yeah, looks really good. Running the exact same prompt in the 2.5 model got us this as a result, which is pretty comparable. Uh, walk cycle looks very good. The, I mean, there's always gonna be changes considering that it was such a minimal prompt, but um, you know, overall, yeah, I would say uh, they're pretty neck and neck. Now, as far as generation times, our uh, turbo model uh, took about two minutes and five seconds. And then the 2.1 version uh, was about two minutes and 45 seconds. So uh, yeah, Kling's never been the fastest of the generation. Generators. Another quick comparison before we move on, uh, one of our typical cinematic crime drama uh, murder board investigation shots. Um, yeah, everything here looks pretty solid. And then once again, run in 2.5. And I mean, you know, the results, once again, pretty comparable. Um, there is a little bit of like a decoherent thing that happens at the very beginning of the clip there. Yeah, you can kind of see it on the male detective's face there. Uh, but you know, this is no cherry picking. This was just one roll. So uh, overall, I mean, I think it's pretty solid. Comparisons out of the way. Let's just take a look at the 2.5 model straight, uh, kicking off with a text to video prompt of, you know, just going with something very, very simple, you know, guy in a coffee shop here. Uh, I do appreciate that not only is our guy double fisting at the beginning of the clip, you can see him actually drinking a cup of coffee and setting it down. He's got another one over here. It looks like he was doing a cappuccino earlier. So uh, yeah, that dude is a man after my own heart. The only decoherent issue that I see is this coffee cup that just kind of vanishes. The barista doesn't seem to care though, so maybe he's working on a magic trick. Now that's not to say that you can't get more interesting looks out of it. For example, here we have like, I don't know, let's call this like cinematic indie film coming of age shot. Or our man here, who is definitely epitomizing cool guys do not look at explosions. You know, as the camera zooms in here, that look is definitely telling us he's the one that pushed the detonator. And finally, rounding out text to video, uh, fight sequences are actually coming along. Not perfect, I will 100% give you that, but uh, definitely in terms of, you know, the actual physics, looking pretty good. Um, really, it's, I mean, the model is really in love with splashing water around. I don't know what the deal is, uh, but that block looks really good. The punch is a little bit off. It actually kind of looks like uh, the stuntman you know, uh, took a rogue punch to the nose there. But, um, you know, overall, there does feel like there's, you know, an actual connection and physicality that's happening here. And the fall is actually really good. Moving on to image to video, prompt coherence, and actually prompt kickback. So kicking off with this image, very David Fincher by way of John Woo, very much in my wheelhouse. The idea here, of course, was to have our assassin guy here take out the two guards and then enter the building. The model was like, eh, not so sure about that prompt, buddy. But because the prompt coherence is so good, I was actually able to change it out to a tranquilizer gun and uh, the guards there are actually just sleeping. They're just taking a quick nap. Now, are there still problems with this generation? Of course, uh, we're still getting a little bit of decoherence on the door there. Our guards' faces actually kind of blob out a little bit when our guy enters the building. It's it's raining inside the building. But there's also a lot to like in here. The overall action is pretty good. Uh, the lighting here is pretty on point. The cars look really good. Moving on, water physics do look pretty good. I mean, at least I think so. I mean, I'm not a hydrophysicist, but 
I do like disaster movies, and I will say that this is probably on par with, you know, any shot that I've seen in a modern disaster film. Stylistic consistency, which is something that they did tout, is uh, it's pretty on point in all honesty, especially with animated looks. Um, the prompt here was very simple. It was just the characters look up as the camera pans up. And yeah, I mean, it does a really great job. Again, nothing in that upper level is referenced in the input image, so that is all generated material. 2.5 will also kind of surprise you from time to time. Very similar prompt here. Uh, cyberpunk woman with long white hair. She looks at the camera, turns and walks away. Uh, and that spaceship that flies over, yeah, that wasn't prompted. Uh, the model just decided to pop that in. I don't know, it was kind of a nice little touch. So thanks, Kling. Testing out emotive performance, which is something that they did talk about. Uh, I decided to break out Kissy Face Girl, um, which is interesting because we actually got Kissy Face Girl this time around. Uh, and previously, I think it was in the 2.0 model, uh, she wouldn't actually kiss the camera lens, which you're still not supposed to do, Kissy Face Girl. Don't kiss the camera lens. So testing out emotions, I prompted for her to be offended uh, and then get up and walk away. Um, for sure, POV guy here is sleeping on the couch tonight. Sliding over to some community outputs, Dave Clark gives us this bit of insanity. And I just noticed that these two people actually get squished by the giant duck. Um, man, what a way to go. Friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry, gives that, you know, kind of emotive performance thing a real workout here. This looks really good. I, I mean, I remember when crying basically would generate something that looked a little bit like that disaster movie we saw earlier. Videos AI Pro gives us this World War One trench POV shot. Uh, kind of reminds me of, like, Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory, if directed by Michael Bay. Uh, this looks really cool. I really like this shot a lot. Sieru gives us another anime animation type look in Kling 2.5. Man, I am telling you, we are going to see a AI generated animation streaming show it like in no time. So overall, a pretty solid update. If you are a Kling fan, this should make you very happy, particularly considering that the 2.5 outputs are pretty close to the 2.1 model, but at a 30% price reduction. Hopefully it won't be too long before we get some other marquee features like first frame, last frame, maybe even that elements feature in the 2.x model, uh, or maybe we just start the countdown to version three. Although knowing Kling, we still have versions 2.6 through nine to get through. Moving on, let's check in with a pretty big WAN update. But first, let's hear a word, literally, because we're talking about voices from our friends at LTX Studio. Back with another check-in with our friends at LTX Studio, who were kind enough to sponsor today's video. You know, last time I mentioned how the gang over there is always striving to improve the platform. And true to that word, they've just updated their voices. Now powered by Gemini 2.5, we've got a level up for your narration needs and completely customizable. So there are about 30 preset voices in here with a variety of tones, pitches, and let's just call it overall vibe. Uh, and if you can't find what you're looking for, you can actually prompt in how you want your voice to sound. There are, of course, a number of prompt suggestions. And I mean, obviously we have epic trailer narrator in here. So, well, you know what I'm gonna do. So grabbing some images and bringing them over to the gen space area, which we did talk about last time, uh, you know, obviously I was able to generate up some video. Now, what I do like about this is that from here, uh, we can simply come up to this tab and just send it directly over to our timeline. And once we have our video clips on our timeline, Timeline tab. Obviously, we can kind of, you know, do some like light adjustment, some trimming here if we need to. Uh, and then from here for our voices, all we need to do is uh, come over here. Here is where you'll also provide your script. Uh, please do forgive me for, you know, the script that's actually written. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. It's not winning any awards or anything. Uh, but what I like is that from here, once you sort of have something that you like, all you have to do is simply add uh, the voice over in, you'll find that your script will actually appear down here in the audio section, and you can use that to retime out uh, your clips to really tighten things up. And once you've got everything kind of eyeballed to where you want it, uh, we pop on some music and we've got ourselves a trailer. In a world where machines have emerged as the apex life form and humans are hunted to extinction by an unstoppable robot army, a rebellion arises, but will it be too late? So yeah, that works. A little generic, sure, but actually that's on me. Uh, as a quick note, you can actually prompt for additional emotions as well. For example, we can have our narrator read this as happy simply by putting brackets around happy, uh, essentially you know, using the brackets to call out an emotion. I don't necessarily know why you would want 
this to be red happy unless the robots are the heroes in this story. Might have to create a new project to explore that idea. While I work on that, you can check out LTX Studio to see everything else they have to offer, including generating in VO3 and their own LTX video model. And uh, you can check out LTX Studio for free. The link is down below. Moving on, so WAN has been on a bit of a roll lately, releasing their 2.2 video model, uh, plus subject to video, and recently 2.2 animate, which is pretty awesome. And it's open source. At baseline, this feature allows you to take any character image and replace a character in a video. Or conversely, you can take the action of any video and apply it to a still image. Now, there are some limitations and it's definitely not perfect, but as we'll see, it is also shaping up to be a very useful tool. So first off, you can, of course, download the model and run it locally. I'll have a link down below. For those of you who do not run things locally, we do have a few spots where you can use it. Uh, it's popping up more and more all over the place, but you can try it out completely for free over on uh, Hugging Face. There's a playground over there or uh, actually on the WAN website, at least currently. And on the platform side, it's already on Higgs Field. Man, those guys are just cranking every new release out. And on Glyph. Uh, I presume it'll pretty much be everywhere by the end of the week. For demo purposes, I figured we could hit up the WAN website, considering that, well, I mean, they built the thing. So uh, just come over to the Generate tab over here. That will give you options down here. Um, make sure that you are clicked over to Avatar. Um, and then your options here are Character Swap, which will bring a character into a video source or photo animate, which uh, will take the action of a input video and then apply it to that photo. For example, taking this like well, Twin Peaks inspired VO3 generation. It is a damn fine cup of Joe, but how's the pie? And using an image of me, well, we ended up getting this. It is a damn fine cup of Joe. But how's the pie? I mean, overall, that is not bad. Uh, there are, of course, some problems noticeably to me immediately is the fact that AI me has clearly been in the gym working on the biceps. Yes, yes. I mean, you can't guilt me, AI me. I am getting back there. Um, the second one, of course, being that our coffee cup is, of course, empty. <laughs> Trying it out in the opposite direction, uh, I ended up taking a shot of me from the AI short film Tuesday. We've run this a number of times on the channel as a video to video test. Uh, take a quick five second look at this. Effective? No. Snoop? Maybe. I've got a pretty good nose, so what's the case? And then running it through with a source image of Keanu Reeves, well, we ended up with this. Effective? No. Snoop? Maybe. I've got a pretty good nose, so what's the case? So that is pretty interesting. Now, would I say, does is it like a rock solid recreation of Keanu Reeves? No, it's actually not. It actually comes off a little more like Keanu adjacent, I would say. But for a one shot, I do think it's pretty solid. And I'd actually be curious to run a few more generations at some point to see if like the non-consistent Keanu remains consistently non-consistent, if you know what I mean. Continuing on with some tests, this time synthetic character to synthetic character. Uh, I grabbed this video of a uh, fancy lady inviting you to sit down next to the couch. It does look a little awkward, but again, that's how fancy people invite you to sit down on couches. And replacing her with the character that we used in the AI short Alarm a couple of days ago, we end up with this, which does look pretty good. Now, there are definitely some problems here. Like the couch kind of uh, inflates like it's an air mattress. And if you notice in the background, uh, there's definitely a ghost walking around back there, but it does look like a fancy old place. So there, there should be a ghost there. So while it might not be a complete one shot, I do think that, you know, if you are pretty good with masking, uh, you can probably go, I'm not gonna go through and keyframe all this stuff out, but uh, you know, because you have the source video, you could basically mask out your uh, replaced character and you know, that would work. Riding out with a quick test on the photo animate side of things. So this time using a still image and driving video. So kind of a little bit like Runways Act 2. Uh, and to that, I'm actually using a video that we used in Runways Act 2. So uh, this is the character, kind of this like a pirate guy. Uh, it was a mid-journey restylization of me. So uh, you can actually see the uh, mic stand in that image. Uh, and then this is the video. So testing out with some movement and some hands in the frame. This seems to be something uh, that really helps with hand generation if you begin your shot with hands in the frame. I mean, I gotta say, pretty impressive. I was actually kind of surprised that it did the zoom in there. So uh, yeah, I mean, well
Well done, Wan. If you want to try out Wan Animate, or Wanimate, as I like to call it, uh, links, of course, are down below. Uh, and of course, because it is open source, expect a lot of improvements to start happening uh, over the course of the next few weeks. Uh, one last one before we go. Uh, Mr. Abu Joe uh, put this one together using an image of Sam Altman. Um, I mean, that's pretty awesome and hilarious. Um, yeah, I love that. Speaking of Sam, is Sora 2 incoming? Well, the rumor mill is starting to churn up on the release of the long overdue Sora 2, and it might be here sooner than you think. With OpenAI's Dev Day coming up on October 6th, we've definitely seen some, well, some breadcrumbs kind of scattered about, and maybe some clues on either what they're working on or what Sora 2 might look like. For one, and we'll take this one with a grain of salt because it is unconfirmed, but there was a screenshot of a, like a leaked schedule that claims at two o'clock on the open dev day that we would see Sora, Imogen, and Codex, the next wave of creative production. So essentially a presentation that would include Sora. But more interesting than that is that Tibor Blaho has been kind of like poking around the back end of the Sora web app for a little while and has noticed this NF2 experiment, uh, which seems to be related to new subdomains uh, like with names like WebB, Composer, Recording, Accepted Invite, FastPass, and more. So this might be Sora 2 testing happening. That said, I will admit, I don't know what any of this means, so take that as you will. But most interesting was the announcement by a new OpenAI employee, uh, Cloud, who apparently, I guess, just moved here to the US at least on an O1 visa, so welcome, sir. Uh, but he will be working on pioneering the future of world models with Sora through infrastructure and development and optimization. Does that mean that Sora is kind of moving into Genie 3 territory? So given all that, and I will admit a lot of that is speculative, I, I would still put money down on something being showcased at Dev Day on October 6th. Um, how much is it all going to cost? Given that it's open AI, I feel that's a pretty valid question. Well, uh, according to a recent tweet by Sam Altman, over the next few weeks, they're launching some new compute intensive offerings, which once again, to me, points to a video model. Um, and because of the associated cost, it will only be available to pro subscribers. So the $200 folks, and some of the new products will have additional fees. So over the next two weeks, I think that we'll probably be definitely seeing something that looks like Sora 2. How much is going to cost? Well, I don't know yet, but I think it's going to be pretty pricey. So I guess that's it for today. I'm already looking at the newsfeed and there's like a thousand things that have popped up. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just going to go get started on that. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.